Welcome to June's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. Given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the tree. According to the definition of LCA on Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes P and Q as the lowest node in T, the binary tree, that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. Here we have a binary tree and we're given p of 5 and q of 1. We can see that the lowest common ancestor is going to be 3 here. On the left side is 5 and the right side is going to be 1. So that's going to be the lowest ancestor. Now if we're given 5 and 4, here we can see 5 is going to be our lowest common ancestor because 5 itself can be an ancestor. And that's going to be the lowest node on side of our levels of binary tree. Now, my first approach was to do a post-order traversal of the binary tree and find every single node starting from the node that equals P or Q and all the ancestors added into like a set. And what I did was union the set together and then re-traverse the tree to find the lowest node where the node exists inside of our tree. But that did work, but it was kind of inefficient. Uh, the, a better way of doing it is to do a post-order traversal here using a recursive function what we'll do is find three scenarios. Uh, either the node itself on the left, the left node is an ancestor of P or Q, and the right side is an ancestor of P or Q. And if that's the case, then this node itself is the lowest common ancestor. As long as we do a post order, the first node that we find that's the case, that's going to be the answer. Uh, but there's two other scenarios. It could be that this node itself is an, the ancestor of P or Q, and on the right side, right here, is an ancestor of P or Q. And if that's the case, then this is going to be the lowest common ancestor. And the other way as well, where this is an um, uh, ancestor of P or Q, and the right side is an ancestor of P or Q. So those are the three scenarios that could happen. So, okay, what we'll do then is write a def for search. First, we're going to store our answer as uh, nothing, and we'll write a function here, def for search, passing in the node. Our base case is obviously, if not node, we'll just return a false. And we want to traverse our tree post order, uh, starting with the left side and the right side, to see if either one of these are going to be an ancestor of P or Q. So left, we want to traverse the ancestor of search, node.left. And the right, we're going to tra traverse as well, right side. Now, what about this one right here that we're on, the current one? Uh, well, the current one. Uh, basically, if this node itself is equal to P or Q, then it counts as an ancestor, right? So uh, this would be whether the node is equal to P or node is equal to Q. Now, if our three scenarios, uh, first, if left and right, that means that this node itself is the lowest common ancestor, or if the cur and right, or cur and left, if either of these con conditions are true, then we want to make this node equal to the answer, and then we can just return. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to return here uh, whether any of these are true, because that if any of these are true, that means this is an ancestor. So if left or right or cur. Oops. Finally, let's call our def search on the root and then return the self dot answer. And this should be it. Let's see here. Okay, that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So time complexity is going to be O of n, and we do use O of n space because of our recursion. You could do this iteratively. It, it's a little bit um, cleaner, but I found it more confusing, frankly. And it's really the same time complexity anyway. So. All right, uh, I think I'll end it here. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.